Cindy. Uh, this is his first recognized horse show. This is at Rocking Horse. And he's doing the beginner novice test. And I figured it was good to kind of capitalize on getting them out and about, him and Henry, um, from the weekend before where we were at Kentucky for the Retired Racehorse Project. So it's all about getting the mileage on the young horses and getting them out and showing and getting the good foundation. Now it's interesting in his dressage test, this is only like his third or fourth time in the dressage ring. So I'm still dealing with some steering issues. He got a little fussy, which he's normally not that way, but oftentimes tension in the young horses that can come out and they can get a little fussy. So I find it's important that as a rider, I try not to make it seem that different from inside the arena to outside the arena and vice versa. So even though he's kind of being a little fussy, I'm still doing training right now. Um, although I'm being judged, right now it's it's way more important that I'm able to keep him thinking and trying to get him to supple and then relaxation occurs. He did give me moments of really good feeling. I could put my leg on and move forward. So I, I think he's going to be a really quite fun horse in the dressage ring. And again, so you see, he missed the, well, not he, we both kind of missed the guest, the, um, can transition just because he had a little bit of tension and he dropped through the corners because he gets a little claustrophobic and right here he's leaning on my inside leg so I keep the pressure I'm not really hiding anything from the judge here I'm trying to make a point that I want him to move off of my inside leg which he eventually did and now we are going across the diagonal this can be a little tough because right after the diagonal, you have to pick up the right lead canter. So it can seem pretty fast, especially on a green horse. And he, again, he gets a little nervous and kind of comes up. But overall, picked up the canter. Okay, stuff that I really have to work on is transitions and again, a little bit of steering. But as I've said before, once the fussiness goes away, he gives you a really good feeling. So... He did a nice canter. He's actually very good in listening to my seat and transitioning down and not laying on my hands. So here you can see he gets a little mouthy, but and I always find it important with the young horses when I'm wanting them to walk and want the relaxation, I always give them a good pat for the free walk. And this is really vital for the horses to learn that they can walk in their dressage tests. And again, it's all about not worrying about being judged right now. It's about him having a good positive experience and allowing him um, the ability to be rideable. So again, now he's still a little tight now after he walked because he thought he was done. <laughs> And we're coming into our halt. So he did it. He cocked one hind leg. But overall, I was happy with that. So now, moving into the show jump round. And again, he hasn't had a ton of experience in jumping a full course. So I wasn't quite sure. But he really did seem to enjoy himself. And I'm excited about this horse for the future. He has quite a good jump and a very nice feel. He's able to collect and wait, and he has a very nice rhythm. And I was for sure expecting him to be a little bit more on the uh, less confident side, but I was actually shocked with how brave he was in the show jump because, again, he doesn't have a lot of experience. Um, and so it's always nice to be pleasantly surprised by your young horses. And he really did give me a good feel around the show jump. Um, well, this is the only time here through the in and out where he drifted a fair bit, but I was able to correct it and he was pretty honest in jumping. And as you can see, I'm in my cross country gear because I had my, um, cross country was shortly after this. So I had, I believe, one rail in the show jump round, and then we went directly to our cross country. 
He did have one stop, which is unfortunate, at the first fence. It was a bit of a scary fence on cross country, but after that, jumped a clean, besides the stop, jumped a clean round. So I was very happy with him for the weekend and gaining his miles. And now I have Henry, who is in the novice division, and he is quite a different ride from Indy. He is a much more forward-thinking horse. He's very bold. Um, I do have a bit stronger bit on him just for this round. I was trying something different to see um, if it would help a little bit with our turning and control. And sometimes I will change the bits up on, on the young horses to see. Um, he tends to build and build and build as he goes. So this bit, which is a gag, allowed me to kind of correct him and then I can soften and let go with my goal always being um, able to go back to the snaffle and to have the horse able to do all three phases in a snaffle. So as you can see, he gets a little head tossy still um, and it gets a little inverted, but the goal with the training is to get him to relax and come over the top line through his canter. And so uh, during his stage of training, you'll see he'll start to get stronger and stronger. And then that will come and improve. So he did end up jumping a clean round. And he was actually started to settle near the end. Of course, here he gets a little silly and starts fussing and going a little sideways and I kind of had to be like hey come on jump and then cross country he was so keen and had a lot of fun he ended up jumping clean show I came back home to work uh, Brightwater who is aka Teddy. This horse um, has had a fair amount had a fair amount of training you know he walked trots canners he jumps cross country he's a very very talented horse but he has some fear issues and so that's what I've been working on and here you can see it's kind of like my tacking up ritual that I've been doing and the very first time I girthed them up his whole body he just got tight as a tick um, this is probably my fourth or fifth session so what I've been focusing on is being clear so he can understand the cues to come into me and to draw and then change directions uh, his big issues were sending to the right as well as drawing he didn't quite understand how to draw to me so again I'm here ha having him just move around once I tightened up the girth um, and I, he gave me a lick and chew and a deep breath he has also been one that has been a little um, you know sound sensitive so I will make the stirrups make a sound and then rub them and tell them it's okay uh, and back away and have him draw to me. The biggest reason why is because the first time I ever tried to get on him with the saddle um, he stuck his head down and proceeded to take off bucking and then knew he was naughty and would not come to me so it's important that when I do this groundwork I teach him that even though he gets fearful he still needs to look f to me and to want to come to me and that he won't get in trouble for that. So here I am 
taking the lead rope and it may look like I'm hitting him but I'm not in fact I'm smacking the saddle which is a good way to teach the horse that um, even though I'm throwing an object I'm not going to hurt you with this object and it's making noise so he is very fearful um, and he's very sensitive he's a highly sensitive horse so again in this desensitization has helped him realize that I'm okay. I'm not going to overcorrect him. And so now I get on and I kind of wiggle around and you see his head's kind of straight up in the air a little bit and ears are back. He gets very tight. He clamps his tail. If I was to kind of ask him to go forward, it would be very tight and very worried. So I kind of like to get on and off, on and off, on and off. Um, again, this is a very big issue in the beginning. And this, I did this filming wise. I've actually able been, been able to get on him a lot quicker. Um, but now I'm asking him to back up. I like to ask them to back up first versus going forward. It kind of helps unlock the brain and move the feet while, you know, you're... You're constantly using a little bit of repetition. So if I have a horse that wants to go forward and buck, I want to teach him to kind of stop and to back up and to rotate his hind in that way. So you'll see I move my feet a little forward to ask for the back. And again, when a horse goes to buck, you move your feet forward. So if I teach a horse to stop and to back up, if they are nervous, I can kind of stop that behavior and then redirect him. So there he kind of gave me a lick and chew, which was nice. So now we're trotting, and again, I'm starting to get a good stop and back. And he was very good. Like, he's a very nice, sensitive horse. Um, he just has to learn that there are better ways to handle his um, nervousness. And see, he dropped his head there. That was huge for him to drop his head and relax. So that's where I like to end things with him. Talk about the problem we're trying to solve today. I sleep better elsewhere, not in my bed. You know how they talk about having a home away from home? Reincarnate my bed. You, you need an away from home at home. <laughs> yeah. So, I'm trying to think of the beds that I slept in, like when I was over in England or my friend's house, I really thought they were squishy and comfy and they had lots of pillows. So we are here at Beth and Beyond. People's faces have touched this pillow and drooled on the ew. It's probably a lot of faces. That's the Beyond part. <laughs> Would it help if you had two? Squeeze me for 20 seconds to feel the cool. Oh, it's happening. There's lots of pillows. Too many pillows. Look at that. I'm totally laying on the floor in Sears. Oh, my God.